Hi everyone, my name is Rui. Today I'm here to talk about guiding dynamic programming via structural probability for accelerating programming by example. There are three keywords in our title. Programming by example is our research problem. Dynamic programming and structural probability are two techniques we use. Let's start with programming by example. Programming by example, or PBE, is an important subproblem of programming synthesis. It takes a set of input-output examples as the specification, and its goal is to generate a correct program corresponding to all given examples. In most cases, for simplicity, a grammar is also provided to the synthesizer for specifying the search space. Here is a simple PBE task, and this task will be used throughout this talk. Given an example, specifying the program abbreviates name John Jonathan into J. Jonathan, and also a grammar limiting that only string concatenation, shell extraction, and three constants can be used in the program. The goal of a PV synthesizer is to find a program from the grammar satisfying the given example. Here, concatenating the first shell of the first input, dot, and then the second input is a valid solution for this task. Despite many existing applications, scalability remains one of the main challenges to apply PB techniques to real-world applications. As pointed out by previous work, a user interacting PB system of industrial quality should respond within 500 milliseconds. However, under this limit, even the winner of the latest SIGAS competition times out on almost half of the tasks in the SIGAS dataset. To optimize the performance of program by example, many approaches have been proposed. Dynamic programming represented by PROS framework and structural probability represented by Euphony are two important techniques among them. The key idea of dynamic programming is twofold. It divides a PBE task into subproblems and solves them recursively. To accelerate, it caches the results for all finished subproblems and reuses them when visiting these subproblems again. To generate subproblems, the concept of witness function is proposed. Witness functions can be regarded as the inverse semantics of operators, and they are predefined rules for pushing examples down to parameters. For example, suppose we want to use operator string concatenation to get string j.jonathan. The witness function of string concatenation would generate nine possibilities. And if the first possibility is taken, the synthesis task is divided into two subproblems. Synthesizing a program output in J and synthesizing a program output in dot Jonathan. And thus, combining the resulting programs of these two subproblems provides a solution to the original task. Let's use a figure to show how a dynamic programming based synthesizer solves our running example. Here, we use circles to represent subproblems and variable O to represent the target output. Start from the whole synthesis task. The synthesizer would firstly enumerate possible operators and use witness functions to generate all possibilities. Here, we use rectangles to represent possibilities. Then, the synthesizer will recursively invoke itself to solve subproblems for each possibility. At last, also the most important, when visiting the same subproblem multiple times, it will reuse memorize the results to avoid duplicate calculations. For example, the subproblem Jonathan is invoked twice, but only searched once, through the reuse mechanism. The idea of structural probability is that whether a program is probable can be predicted from its structure. For example, it is improbable for a decreasing operator to occur directly after an increasing operator. Therefore, structural probability can be used to print off such states. All improbable programs can be skipped. The main advantage of structural probability is that structural probability can be captured by lightweight models and thus using it is time saving. In this paper, we propose a novel framework named Max Flash. Max Flash combines dynamic programming and structural probability for further speeding up programming by example. However, there is no free launch in the world. 
To enjoy the efficiency of these two approaches at the same time, we have to overcome two challenges first. The first challenge is that dynamic programming is local, but the structural probability is global, and thus two conflicts emerge. The first conflict is that many common patterns on the structure cannot be captured by dynamic programming. For example, most programmers may prefer to write the concatenation of three strings right associatively rather than left associatively. Formally, such a pattern means that the probability for string concatenation to be used as the first parameter of another concatenation is much smaller than as the second parameter. Many structural patterns describe probabilistic relations between context information and operators. In this example, the operator is string concatenation, while the context information is the parent operator and the index among parameters. However, due to the reuse mechanism, basic dynamic programming cannot capture context information at all. In the previous running example, the results of subproblem Jonathan is reused. However, the two invocations of this subproblem are under different parent operators, making the probabilistic rules provided by the structural probability unavailable. For simplicity, when resolving this conflict, we only consider a special kind of model named the top-down prediction model, abbreviated as TPM. In a TPM, the context information of a vertex only depends on its ancestors. Such a property provides great convenience for combining with dynamic programming. For example, this is the AST of the target program of our running example. The ancestor of vertex 2 is vertex 1. Therefore, for our top-down prediction model, the probability for triad to be used on vertex 2 is equal to the probability for triad to be used as the first parameter of string concatenation. So do other vertices. The previous pattern of concatenation can also be represented by a top-down prediction model. In this model, only the parent vertex matters the context information. We call all these models as one gram model. Top-down prediction models can be easily captured by dynamic programming. The only thing we need to do is to add the context information into subproblems. The modify search procedure is shown in the right figure. Here, we use variable C to represent the context information. As you can see from the green subproblems, subproblem Jonathan splits into two subproblems with two different contexts. Such a split method has a drawback. It increases the number of subproblems, leading to potential ineffectiveness. We will discuss this point in the second challenge. The second conflict is that a subproblem represents only a local program fragment, and it is hard to distinguish improbable programs only on program fragments. For example, expression increasing x itself is probable, but becomes improbable in decreasing after increasing x. Therefore, it is unknown whether program fragment increasing x is probable or not. We involve three search techniques to make MacFlash efficiently prone off such states. They are iteratively deepening search, branch and bound, and heuristic function. When performing iteratively deepening search, a global lower bound is set. The search only focuses on programs with probability larger than the limit. The limit is constantly relaxed until one solution is found. Here, we assume the lower bound is 0.01. Branch and bound attach the probability lower bound to each subproblem, representing the current fragment is possible to be in a probable program only when its probability is larger than the lower bound. For example, the lower bound of the root example represented by variable L should be equal to the global lower bound. To perform branch and bound, two questions need to be answered. How we propagate lower bounds among subproblems and how we use them to print off such states. Both questions can be answered by involving a heuristic function. A heuristic function represents a probability upper bound of each subproblem. Here, we only consider a simple heuristic function. The heuristic value of a subproblem is the probability of the most probable program without considering examples. For example, suppose concatenating dot and the second input is the most probable program in the grammar. 
and its probability is evaluated as 0 0.16. At this time, 0 0.16 is used as the heuristic value of the root problem, even though this program does not match the example. The heuristic values of all subproblems are attached to the figure. With the help of the heuristic function, it is easy to answer the previous two questions. The lower bound of a subproblem can be obtained by dividing the heuristic value of sibling subproblems from the overall lower bound. For example, suppose we want to use string concatenation to solve the root problem, and now we want to get a lower bound for the first subproblem. According to the model, the probability of the operator is 1, and according to the heuristic value, the probability of the second parameter is low larger than 0 0.4 and the overall lower bound is 0 0.01. Therefore, we can get a lower bound for the first subproblem, which is 0 0.01 divide 1 divide 0 0.4, resulting in 0 0.025. The lower bounds of other subproblems can be calculated in the same way. The only condition for printing is that, for a solvable subproblem, its heuristic value, which is an upper bound, should be larger than the lower bound. Therefore, max flush prints off all subproblems when this condition is violated. For example, suppose we are solving the selected subproblem, and the probability of each operator is listed in this table. Then, we could directly skip all operators with probability smaller than the lower bound. Now, let's turn from structural probability to dynamic programming. The secret of the success of dynamic programming is that it reuses results to avoid duplicate calculations. The basic reuse mechanism is that results are reused when visiting the same subproblem multiple times. For the basic dynamic programming, such a reuse mechanism is efficient enough. Its subproblem only contains some examples, and thus the number of different subproblems is limited. However, in order to utilize the structural probability in Max Fush, two other dimensions, context information and the lower bound are involved. As a result, the number of subproblems grows dramatically. To improve the efficiency of the reuse mechanism, we try to enable result reusing among different subproblems. Specifically, we consider reusing results across the example dimension and the lower bound dimension. For the lower bound dimension, let's start with two subproblems which are almost the same, except that the lower bound of the first subproblem is smaller than the second one. Now, suppose one valid program of the first subproblem is found, and we want to reuse it for the second subproblem. However, such reuse fails since the resulting program violates the lower bound of the second subproblem. Therefore, we have to redeal with the input output example to find a more probable valid program, leading to duplicate calculations. To avoid this situation, we make Max Flush always search for the most probable program of a subproblem. Under this guarantee, the most probable program would be found when solving subproblem 1. And then, to reuse this result, we only need to compare its probability with the new lower bound. If the lower bound is satisfied, this program can be directly returned. Otherwise, there must not be any valid program, since the current program has already been the most probable one, and thus, the duplicate calculation is avoided. For the example dimension, let's also consider two subproblems. The only difference between these subproblems is that the example of subproblem 1 is only a subset of subproblem 2. We observe that since the second subproblem considers more examples, solving it is always more time consuming than solving subproblem 1. Therefore, reusing results from subproblem 1 to subproblem 2 can lead to a significant speed up. Now, suppose the best program of subproblem 1 is found. To reuse this result, we need to check whether this program generalizes to all extra examples. If it does, it must also be the most probable program for subproblem 2. We observe that such a generalization often holds, since we always search for the most probable program, and thus such a reuse mechanism is useful. In our evaluation, we construct two datasets representing two popular domains of programming by example, the string manipulation domain with 205 tasks, 
and the matrix transformation domain with 39 tasks. We compare Max Flush with six state-of-the-art synthesizers, including the winners of the PBE string track in SIGAS, synthesizers based on dynamic programming and structural probability, and another state-of-the-art synthesizer. We also consider the best PBE tool on the string domain, transformation.text, which is a closed-source tool based on pros. In our evaluation, we record the speed-up and the memory cost of Max Flush against the baseline solvers. This table lists the results of the comparison with baseline synthesizers. The result demonstrates that Max Flush achieves significant speed-ups against all baselines, and at the same time is more memory saving than them. This table shows the results of the comparison with transformation.txt. The result shows that ttext shows more benchmarks than Max Flush. This is because ttext is built on an unpublished grammar in which more powerful operators, such as rejects matching, are enabled. These operators making some hard tasks much easier. Even though Max Flush still achieves a speed up on benchmarks sold by both approaches, and also Max Flush is much more memory saving. Let's make a summary. In this paper, we design Max Flush, which combines structural probability and dynamic programming for accelerating programming by example. To achieve an efficient combination, we resolve conflicts between dynamic programming and structural probability, and we also redesign the reuse mechanisms. Our evaluation shows that Max Flush achieves significant speed ups against the state of the art solvers. Thanks for listening, and I'm glad to answer the questions.